Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is a uh, one of three tutorials designed uh, to help you complete the Hardy Weinberg uh, lab. This first one is going to show you how to create the model, uh, and we'll discuss uh, what the different formulas are doing on the spreadsheet. The second one will be designed to show you how to increase, um, actually, to add uh, several generations and to create uh, increased population size. And then the third video will show you how to create a graph and to interpret uh, some of the findings of your investigations. So as you can see, I already have this up here and you've gone through your lab and you should have most of this. But um, what we did first was we, uh, this cell right here, we just um, put in a number that was uh, between zero and one. And for the second cell, we entered a function. Anytime you enter a function, you need to put an equal sign. And so since P plus Q is equal to one, uh, then we need to, Q is going to be one minus whatever P is, which is 0.5. So we just click on the cell. That way, oops. That's a, a good example of how near in a formula, if you want to get out of the formula, don't try to click off of it, just hit the enter key on that way you off your formula. That way, whatever you plug into the E frequency that will change uh, the Q frequency so that they will both equal one. So then after you did that, and you can see that I did some formatting here. If you wanted to change color, you simply highlight the cells that you want, right click and go to format cells, and then um, you go to fill and you can put in whatever color you want. Uh, then we put in some gametes. Uh, we wanted to um, if we click on this first cell here in E5, they had us insert a formula that looks like this. And at any time you need to fix a formula, of course you can pause this video uh, and insert it into your own Excel sheet. But this formula is basically generates a random number between 0 and 1. What it's saying is that if that number is equal to or less than whatever value you put into this cell, then we're going to enter the letter A into this column. If it is greater than this value, then the computer is going to enter a B. And we entered the same uh, formula for this column. Remember, we have to put two cam meets together. So I think instead of entering that, um, you just simply highlighted that box and you drag it over. Um, and you can see that this changes each time I make a little change. It's, it, it's figuring that I'm hitting the random um, number generator and changing this through. So then after that, we wanted to do a certain amount of uh, gametes, and we chose to do, I think it was about 16. So once you had these two done, we just, all you had to do is simply highlight both of them uh, and drag it down, way down to the bottom, which represented 16 cells. So you had a random generation of uh, A's and B's, but it was, was res with respect to the frequencies that you chose for P and Q. Um, then we wanted the zygotes. So these gametes are going to come together. And the way we do that is we enter a, a um, formula. We use the word concatenate. Concatenate. That's a tough one to say. What that simply means is that we're going to put together whatever we highlight. We want to put together these two in this cell. And so we take that word, highlight the two cells, click enter, and there we have it. It's pushing the B and the B together. Once you have that in that formula, then you simply drag the corner, um, drag the corner down, and it will copy that formula throughout. So you can double check and just say, okay, well, if we have this gamete and this gamete coming together, it should be an AA, and in the zygote it is. So you can check a few of them just to make sure that that's worked out okay. So then we want to have a number of each different genotype for uh, each combination. So for if we want to tally the AAs, then we're going to put in the function if we're going to put this cell equals a, A, then we're going to enter a 1. If it doesn't, then the computer is going to enter a 0. That's essentially what that formula is telling us. So you can see since the zygote is not an AA, it entered a 0 in here. Um, this function, we had to do kind of a, a double take on this one because 
um, it will arrange A and B and B and A in those two configurations. And so the reason we're doing this is that it's saying, okay, well, if this zygote is an AB or if it is a BA, then we're going to enter one. If not, we're going to enter a zero. And you can see now that it randomly generated a BB, so you can see this column is a zero. Um, and then for BB, it's basically the same thing as the um, formula that we had back here, and, but instead in the quotations we have a BB. So that's saying that if the zygote is a BB, then we're going to enter one, and if it isn't, we're going to enter a zero. So after you get those formulas done, then you can simply uh, click the corner and drag it all the way down to the bottom, and you will have that formula repeated, and you'll do that for each one. You'll click the corner, drag it down, and it will copy that, um, copy and paste that formula throughout. So the next thing that we need to do was, I must have changed the formatting or something, I'm missing a line here. And that's an easy thing to change. We simply go into a format cell. We're looking at the border, and we want a bottom border on that. So that's consistent there. There we go. Next thing that a lab wanted you to do for procedure was to make a sum of each of the genome types. So that's a pretty easy formula. All I have to do is type uh, the equal sign first, of course, then type sum, the parenthesis, and then you highlight all of these cells, close the parenthesis, and then hit enter. And that will give you your total. So we did that uh, in this cell, and then you can click that cell and drag it over, and um, it will uh, copy that. We can go back in and check. Yep, it's taking the sum of that column, and yes, it's taking the sum of that column over there. Let me do the number of uh, each allele. So we just typed in the letter A. Um, we formatted the cell, so it had a line on the bottom of the box. And then in this, what we're saying here is, um, we're typing in the word count, the words count if, and then in parentheses, so we um, type parentheses, and then we want to highlight both of these columns. So out of all the gametes, if we see the letter A, we're going to count that as one, and we're going to tally them all up. You can see there's 14 A's total out of all of these gametes. And for the B, it's going to be the same, same formula. If you want to type in the, the letters and numbers, you can, or you can highlight with this blue part here as cells that are highlighted. So just highlight all of those. And then um, instead of having an A here, of course, we're going to type in B into quotation. So that's saying if we see a B anywhere in these cells, we would need to count each one as number one, and we're going to um, add all those up. So right now, out of these, these cells, all the gametes, we have 18 A's and 14 B's. All right, the allele frequency for the next generation. So basically that's saying, what is it with this random number generation? Um, what were what was our P and Q values? And that's what you can use to compare what you had expected. We had expected 50% of each, but you can see 18 and 14 is not equal numbers out of 32. We would expect 16 and 16, but instead we got a p-value of 0.5625 and a q-value of 0.4375. Um, in order to uh, enter this formula, you simply um, double click or click on the cell, enter equal sign. You're going to um, just click on this cell. Then you're going to type in a forward slash. Then you type in the word sum, quotation. You highlight this, this cell, put a comma. Highlight this cell, close your parentheses. So that's saying you're taking this number and dividing it by the sum of the two boxes. And for the Q, there's two ways you can do that. You could uh, hit equal sign, just click on the cell and it'll enter J4, hit the forward slash, then parentheses, then hit um, this cell, um, plus this cell. And actually, um, you know, you can either have a comma or a plus sign. I think you're going to end up having the same result, so it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't matter when we do. So those, are, those give us the allele frequency for our, our next generation. So based on um, random assortment of alleles with respect to um, allele frequencies, uh, what are we getting? This is what we ended up getting with this population size. All right.
So then um, we wanted to have a number of offspring with AA, and really this is just copied down from here. We entered a formula, um, but you could probably just enter um, equal sign. I just clicked on this cell. Right. Likewise, you could do um, with this one an equal sign. This is BB, so it's going to be this cell. And then with this one, equal sign, this is our A, B, or B, A. I could just hit this so, There we have it. So um, I'm just going to hit function F9. You can see how those numbers change. And what it's doing is just randomly generating numbers and giving us an assortment of gametes. Where most of the time you see equal amounts of A's and B's because we selected five for frequencies. Now the expected number of uh, homozygous individuals with the allele A, we entered uh, a formula that looks like this. Let me move my recording symbol here. Um, but it's a really long, looks like a complicated uh, formula. Basically the reason we had to do that was because we want to tally, let me just get off this formula for a minute here. We want a tally of all of the zygotes here. Unfortunately, there's not a formula that will tally, at least one that I haven't found, that will tally the fact that you've just highlighted those boxes. It always looks for what's inside of the box. So we have to communicate to the computer, the program, that no matter what we have, whether it's a BB, an AB, a BA, or an AA, it needs to count that as number one. So that's why we entered this complicated formula that looks like this. So we're counting all those up, and then we're multiplying it by p squared because we want to know, and our p square value, or our p value, is 0.5. So we take that, we take the 0.5, and we square it here, and there's a little carrot on top, and that's by you get that by hitting f or shift uh, six. And then two, so that's like saying that whatever's in that cell squared multiplied by all of this. And that's just saying this is all of this is giving us a tally of basically all the zygotes. But um, all of our zygote combinations could potentially be AB, BA, AA, or BB. Now be careful about how you enter this. If you make one tiny mistake, like missing a parenthesis somewhere, it won't get you what you need. I'm going to do the same thing this one. Um, so what you could do is go back to this one, copy your entire formula, go to this cell, paste it, and the only thing you need to change is this cell. So you could highlight the cell. It would have been D2 when you pasted it, and you just go up and you click that cell. There you have it. So that gives you uh, your expected based on a population of, I think, I had 32 zygotes total. Um, I should have four and four with these genotypes. And then I should have twice the amount of either one of those for this. And the way we enter that is to do the same thing all the way through, saying, okay, add a one for every genotype possibility we have for the zygotes. We won't include all those. But now we have to multiply it by what PQ is. This is essentially PQ. Um, it's 2PQ within the hardy weinberg formula. So we have to take 2 times P times Q, and P and Q values are going to be the D and 2, D2 and D3 cells. So in this parentheses here, I put 2 times, and, and the star is the time sign. I clicked on D2, and then I hit a, um, this is a multiply sign again, the star, and then I went back and clicked on D3. There we have it. So you should have, and you may not have even numbers here based on how many zygotes you have, but these two values should be the same. And when you look at your AB value, expected AB genotype, that should be twice the amount of either one of those. If you don't have that, you have to go back and look at all your formulas to see if you had making, made any mistakes. Okay, so that's basically how we generated this uh, model. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to... Um, add generations and to increase population size.